Okay, so on this um, on this session, I, I want to run through um, a couple of hacks to really improve your sort of results and something that I do quite regularly. So I'll share these documents. Uh, I'm going to pop them into, um, they'll be in the uh, comments bit down below. Um, so a couple of key things is making sure that um, you, you're, you're always on top of your your game and you're always performing at the best of your ability. So what I like to do is this document here called win the week. I do this on a Sunday. Um, it's scheduled in my diary every Sunday uh, for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And I just make sure that I plan the week out. So I've got, um, let's see. So we've got, um, in the, in the focus questions here. So what's the number one thing that you want to accomplish this week? You know, try and just keep it very, very specific. But the number one thing, remember the, the, the diagram that we had where it was sort of ease of implementation versus maximum impact. And in the top right corner, that those tasks need to be kind of one of the tasks that you're going to be the number one to complete this week. Um, the, where do you want to place your focus this week? Again, you know, making sure that you're placing your focus in, you know, a very few areas. Don't want to overwhelm yourself and get nothing done. So it's just very straightforward. You know, where do you want to focus yourself? Um, who do you want to focus on serving this week? And, um, you know, in terms of, you know, serving, it, it, it's more along the lines of, um, uh, two sections. Um, um, you know, is that serving your staff? Is it serving yourself? Is it serving guests? Is it serving tenants? You know, you got to think of like who's your client? Is it serving estate agents? Is it your client? So just have a think about you know who you're going to serve. Uh, acquisition and revenue goals. So how many units do I want to acquire this week? Um, that what is my goal? And you should be able to confidently predict that based on your pipeline. Um, how many uh, direct bookings cash collected? So if you're running service accommodation, then how much have you collected from direct bookings? And you want to make sure that, you know, you have a target and you are achieving that each week um, because that all just drips in. I think more often than not, people get lazy. They just rely on the OTAs. And when the OTAs shut you off, you're left high and dry. So I've got to shift this mindset to direct bookings and that's cash collected as well. So, you know, how much have you invoiced out and have you had, you know, the taken through Stripe or whatever medium you take your payments through? Uh, how many viewings have you booked that week? Uh, so, or what is your target? So is it 20, 25, you know, what it, whatever it is, put your targets out there and then they're out there. This is kind of holding yourself accountable. Obviously you're going to review this document so part of your, before you, before you set your new weekly review, say on a Sunday night, your first 10 minutes might be looking at the review document that you wrote last week, but you should really be looking at this, you know, quite regularly through the week and just make sure that you're on track with stuff. In terms of your three core projects, so uh, you might have, you know, things like set up a many chat flow to come from Facebook ads and lead them into, you know, whatever, a, a BRR quick sale flow or a service accommodation flow, whatever it might be. Um, it could be set up XYZ units and get it listed, you know, so a project is something that, you know, might take a bit more than an hour. You know, it, it might be accumulation of a couple of days or it might be accumulation of a couple of sessions that you need to put together to get, the activity done uh, and you should have three of those on your calendar every single week and again those three move your business forward you then want to break yourself down in terms of uh, days so monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday um so again you'll get copies of these documents so you'll have everything now you'll see here you've got game day preparation day or free day so for me a game day is it's typically a Monday or a Tuesday. Uh, I've brain dumped a load of stuff on a Sunday night. I've been thinking about stuff over the weekend. You know, what can, what do I really want to do? And I try and just like cram, not cram in loads of stuff, but my 
basically getting shit done day is, is, is game day. So, you know, that could be, you know, actually building out flows or, um, you know, sitting down and researching loads of properties, um, you know, sending out a whole host of messages to the right people, whatever it might be, you know, that is game day. That's like pure activity level day. And, uh, you know, you need to have these on, on your calendar. So for me, I tend to, Mondays and Tuesdays tend to be my game days. Um, and then a preparation day is basically a day where you've got stuff on your calendar and that's going to tee up your game day. So typically Thursday, Fridays will be my preparation day for Monday, Tuesdays. So I'm making sure that I've got, um, you know, uh, I'm making sure I've got, you know, everything set up that I need to set up. So if I'm going to be, um, say right now, all my content from a marketing, you know, have I got all my topics in a, um, in a document so I can then literally just go and, you know, produce and, and write those, write those articles out. So things like that, or shoot the videos, you know, if you're going to, um, you know, shoot some YouTube videos, or you're going to shoot some videos or even live streams on your Facebook profile or in the groups, What's the content going to be so that when you come to game day, you're not having to research the content. It's just there ready to deliver and you just go. Um, and then it's important to have free days as well. You know, we've got to, we've got to manage your energy levels. I know I've been pushing quite hard lately and my energy levels have definitely dropped a bit. So I've changed a few things in the last week in terms of diet, my fitness and how much time out I'm having. And that's allowing me to actually get more energy, more focused and want to push even harder. So you've got to manage your energy levels and you've got to be aware of your energy levels, which these documents will kind of um, come on to. So uh, what's the purpose of the day? Uh, what's the ideal ingredients of the day? So just, you know, um, laying it out, you know, how the day will flow. Um, who do you want to be with or work with on that day? And what's the ideal result for that day? So on a Sunday, you're kind of just planning your week out and then you go and execute your week. And once you've got this information, you then put it into your Google Calendar and you plan your week out, okay? So you make sure that everything from here is put in and you're planning your week out. So that's win the week. So first part, I, do, I would say do it on a Sunday uh, evening, maybe, you know, if you've got kids, once the kids have gone to bed, or if you've just like, once you've pretty much got your weekend out of the way and you want to start getting back in, into work mode, then plan, look at last week, see where you went wrong, see where you went right, and then plan your week out for this week. And then as you're going through the week, it's important that we constantly are analyzing and monitoring. So in the, um, you know, various reports get sent into me, but I also think it's important for me to analyze myself. So every morning you'll see on my calendar here is the first thing I do every morning pretty much is my morning intentions. So what's the bottleneck in the value chain? Um, so, you know, we highlighted this from uh, the KPI tracking uh, video. So where you're going to identify your team, uh, identify, you know, what you use, and who is responsible for what KPIs. And then at the bottom, you have a, a, a score of one to five. You know, where's your, where are your ones and twos? What's your bottleneck? So for me recently, it's been acquisitions. So my morning intention uh, for pretty much the last week or two has been acquisitions. And I've been like really focusing on trying to fix that. And I feel like we've kind of made some good shifts on that this week. Um, what's your main focus today? Don't overwhelm yourself with loads of stuff to do. I've got in the habit of doing this, thinking I need to do as much as I possibly can to move as quick as I can. All it ends up doing is you end up stressed, frustrated, nothing really gets done to the best of the ability, and you actually do nothing or very little. Um, what are the three top tasks, projects that you committed to completing today? So this is kind of not as in-depth a project as maybe in, the, uh, in here where we have the three core projects. This could just be, um, like today for me, I want to create some new end of day reports specific to the relevant job roles rather than a, I've, at the minute I feel like I've got a generic one and it, everybody fills it in. And it, but really I want to make it more specific to, um, to the department and to the person. So I want to, that's one of my little projects for today that I want to complete. So, um, and then obviously I'll get that issued out to the staff. Uh, what loops am I committed to closing today? These are kind of things that 
hanging over your head, draining your energy a bit, um, you know, and just really you just need to get off your plate, you know. It could be that sort of thing that's been on your to-do list and you just keep pushing it back and back and back. You know, we've all been there. So, you know, just get it on, just get it done and get it boxed off because you don't realise, but having these having these like open loops for like normally menial little tasks, they really do soak your energy up every day. Like, oh, no, I need to do that. You better off just, just clearing it off and getting it done or handing it over to someone to get it done. And what's your perceived energy level? And I think this is important to kind of know where you're at. This is how I knew that I needed to kind of just take time out a bit and just, just sort of recharge. So these are kind of the, the energy levels. So no energy burnt out, low energy, okay energy, almost full tank, clean energy, and full tank of clean energy, you know, ready to go. So um, what am I committed to do today to raise or perceive my energy level? So for example, the last few weeks, I've committed to drinking less coffee and drinking more water, as daft as that sounds. Um, I was at like five cups of coffee a day. I've gone down to like one uh, to two and not having any after two o'clock so that I sleep better. Um, and drinking more water. And I just feel so much more up and ready to do shit again. So I'm like, this is like changed. You know, a lot of us think that it's the strategy that's going to get us there or it's like, you know, getting out and hustling all the time. And, and yes, there's an element of that. But at the same time, if you can't drag yourself to do something at the best of your ability at all times, you're not passionate about, you're not pumped about doing it very more often than not, it's not going to be done to the highest standard and you're probably not going to get the right result. So it's important to, to know where you're at and then what you're committed to to helping you raise your energy. Um, what am I most looking forward to today? And this can be anything. For me this morning, it was uh, a game of tennis. Um, so, you know, that, that's what I was looking forward to doing because I felt like, you know, I just needed that headspace. I wanted to get out there and, and just, you know, sweat a bit and, and what have you. So it doesn't always have to be work. And then what you're grateful for today. So um, I do think this is a cliche question. I never used to believe in it. And I thought it was almost like just a bit of a pat in the back sort of thing that, you know, these sort of mindset people. Uh, but really, when you actually just quickly write a couple of sentences, it really does change your mindset and it sort of puts you in a better place yourself. And I've started committing to this a lot more and, and it really does make a difference. So these little things, they, you, you feel like they don't make a difference, but this takes like five, 10 minutes. All I do is I cut and paste this, I fill it in, I cut and paste the answers and I pop it into my Google calendar, into my morning routine, and I just paste the answers in there. So I've always got them and then I can kind of always be looking back at where I was and how I tracked. Um, and then at the end of the day, it's, you know, Evening reflections. So I do mine about four o'clock. Here you'll see four o'clock. Um, you know, and I've been getting a lot more strict with like four o'clock evening reflections and then check out because I seem to get going again around seven o'clock, eight o'clock with either webinars or things like that. So I, I've started to like really start checking out at four o'clock and having some, some downtime um, to kind of then get ready to go again. So um, list the activities and notes that you did that day like as basic as went to the post office, um, you know, um, whatever, you know, call 20 estate agents, whatever it might be. Uh, what did you get better at today? Uh, where did you fall short? Um, so these are two important questions because obviously then you're evaluating yourself and you want to move forward. Um, what's the reason I'm doing what I'm doing? You know, why is it so important? I think it's a good idea to always remind yourself of that. So that kind of relates to your purpose a bit. Again, what am I grateful for today? So what were you grateful for today? Um, you said it in the morning, you're going to say it again in the night. So like mine the other day was, um, and I posted this in the group, I was grateful for my team because they allowed me at the minute to just really work on the business and, uh, and I don't have to work in the business. So I'm really grateful for that because that means that I can have, you know, peace that I know they're doing that and I know the money's still going to come in and I can really focus on like getting the business to a better level. So I'm really grateful for that because without them, I couldn't do what, what I wanted to do. Um, this is a really important question. And what you need to do is open up. So I, I've got a Mac, so I use my notes. But um, everything I put in this section here, every day I cut and paste into my notes. 
So I then come up with a list of like non CEO tasks that, you know, really you shouldn't be doing. And it, um, you know, obviously Charlie, you're looking to really leverage at the minute. So this would be a good, good, really good task for you. And then what I do is when I feel like the list's a decent size, I go, right, is there a job role there for somebody? Or can I give that to somebody else already on the team? And then what you then do is start putting SOPs around it so that you're not just saying, there's my task, deal with it. You're saying, there's my tasks. That's the instructions how to do it properly. And then they don't come back to you asking questions and you don't get frustrated. So start building your lists out. And when you feel like you've got a big enough list to give someone a job, then go and look to, to fill that role, whatever it might be. And what you'll also find is like quite a lot of these tasks, you can just delete. They don't even need doing. You know, you'd be doing stuff that you don't even need to do. So delete, delegate, or automate. Um, and automation can be either through software or by a person. Uh, what are my intentions for tomorrow? So, you know, what, what are you looking forward to tomorrow? What are you going to do? And then you want to like rate yourself. And again, this is in the end of day report. So if you have been into the, um, into that section of the program already, um, you'll, you'll see it's quite familiar, but again, it's like, I like to repeat stuff. So, um, I control my calendar and activity of the day. Uh, I did what I said I was going to do. Uh, spent time in there. I'm, I'm all about morning routine. Honestly, I've started, I got a bit lazy and I was pushing the clock back to half five, quarter to six, and it just seemed to knock my day out. The last like week and a half, I've like religiously back to 5 a.m. and just smashed out three hours worth of work. And it just sets my day up so much better. So I just feel like I get so much more done. And if anything, any curveball comes in throughout the day, I don't really then feel like I've missed out on anything. So, um, you know, just reflecting on stuff allows me to, to know that that's happening. Uh, operate the peak of my abilities. I protected my biology today. So this is like the drinking coffee, adding more water type scenario, uh, less sugar, um, you know, screen time down after sort of seven o'clock on your phone. So you sleep better. Um, I remember to serve people the day, so whatever day I did this on, or, or maybe this is just an example, but, um, you know, maybe I didn't. Um, I'm on pace to hit my revenue. I'm on pace to hit my revenue goals for the month and, and for the quarter. And again, it's important that we know where we're at each week, month and quarter to achieve our acquisitions, achieve our revenue goals, and make sure that the business is constantly moving forward. Again, what was my perceived energy um, exertion? So, um, you know, where, where did we see we were at in terms of one to five? Uh, what am I committed to do, to doing or not doing tonight or tomorrow to improve my energy level? So for me at the minute, it's definitely less screen time after seven o'clock. I can get a bit dragged into my phone or my Mac. And, uh, and then that, you know, just, I just want to get it away. And I've spent more time just like, you know, doing stuff around the house or just pottering around a bit without even like going near my phone, like putting it in a different room. I think far too often we get sucked in our phones. One thing as well with basically when we go into our phones, uh, we get a dopamine hit. That's why so, so many people are addicted to, the, to this sort of mobile phone. Um, that's why everybody walks around like this because it gives you a dopamine hit, whether you're checking into Facebook, whether you're going to Instagram, whether you're just checking your emails, whatever it might be. And that's why, you know, it's getting more and more addictive. So what happens then is you become less and less, um, it actually takes a bit of your ambition away to then actually go and do something um, for your business. Because when you're then doing it for your business, you're not getting that dopamine hit. So you're not, like thinking, oh, I love doing this. It's kind of, oh, this is another run of the mill task again. And again, since I've started putting my phone back down a lot more, I'm like loving being back into like work mode and, you know, really getting stuff done. Because, you know, although I might come across as the most high energetic, you know, always at it type person, I, I'm not, you know, and, you know, you, you kind of got to change and know where you're at. And you've got to, I have to, put these things in place to be able to keep, keep myself going and keep myself upbeat because, you know, it's, it's actually harder that I think the more successful you become, it's harder to keep yourself pushing because you can hit those very easy comfort levels, um, especially around money. So you've got to always be like trying to like get that, that, that don't mean hit that then kicks you back into work mode and you go again. Um, and then just any final thoughts uh, that you know, you might have, 
around the day or that you feel like is important to just put down on a bit of paper, just write it down. And, um, and then that basically um, covers your day, you know, so you plan your week, you plan your morning and you plan your evening every single day. And by doing this small commitment, you're talking like 45 minutes on a Sunday, five minutes on a morning, five minutes on an evening, every single day of the week, even Saturdays and Sundays, and you'll definitely move your business forward.